Welcome back to another episode here at Scrap Mechanic Labs. I am your host, Chief Engineer, and I have taken you into this outdoor shooting range to cover a lot of important little details I've found. We just got done with my first impressions video not too long ago, and I gotta give a big shout out to everyone who participated in that and helped me because I was able to learn a lot about the kind of utility that we're going to be able to get out of the um, spud gun here. Now, keep in mind, this is still an early access kind of thing. And what I mean by that is this is not the final production run. They are still working on this at Axolot. And what we see here may or may not have application later on, depending on how they tweak the mechanics of all this. But we're going to keep an open mind for now. We're going to look ahead and I'm going to go over just a couple of the ideas real quick here to give you a summary before we go into the nitty gritty of what this weapons master class is going to be all about. Now, we're going to cover something really cool, which is what I call remote triggers, the potential for wireless potato data and how that ties into artillery platforms. We're also going to talk about potato steering. Yeah, that's a thing now. That's something you could do. There's going to be potato power systems, release mechanisms, sniping, no scoping versus optics, how breathing may affect your targeting. There's also something else called trajectory favoritism, which I discovered, which is going to be a comparative between automated systems versus you just holding a gun, you know, just holding a gun and firing. Um, and how that sort of reconciles in maybe a battle type scenario. So that's gonna pretty much cover it. So um, as you can see, I have a couple of workstations set up because we are the lab, so we do some experiments here. Um, it's gonna be really cool, it's gonna be super fun. And uh, if you like these types of videos, Please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a comment if you have any questions about the stuff I'm talking about. So, without further ado, uh, onward to our commercial break. <laughs> okay, let's start off with some really important spud gun basics here okay um, release mechanisms this is the first thing I want to point out really quick because it is so important so many people have been looking for a way to automatically trigger the separation of an, one object from another here it's pretty easy to do now all you'll need is either a glass a cardboard and it works with both types of glass this type down here or this type and uh, you just press your trigger and there you go you could release your cargo as simple as that so many applications you could use this for booster rockets you want to separate whatever now you don't have to have some convoluted system of interlocking blocks like we've been using this is great um, I mean all we're missing now is a reattachment method but you know I'll take what I can get so far fantastic if you haven't thought about using a potato gun for that try it out you're gonna have a great time the other thing is potato steering yes potato steering can actually be a thing now I know it's probably not the most practical way to turn but if you find yourself in a jam and you got more guns and potatoes than you know what to do with hey this could be a solution to one of our future building problems especially in survival where scarcity it will play a big issue in the gameplay so see that it's a pretty simple concept and it's scalable too if you add more guns it gives you more turning power I guess to each side and based on the same principle here will be uh, the power systems as you can see if you have a surplus of potatoes and guns because you can't find an engine anywhere or a controller for that matter you can still find a way to translate that into propulsion and of course if you want reverse you can do that too um, I'd love to see 
some cars built based on these concepts here. I think that'd be really neat to watch. Um, maybe a larger paddle, maybe a bigger type of wheel. I don't know. It depends. I haven't tried to scale this up. It's just, I'm just throwing it out there. All right. Now for the real weapons master stuff here. And we're going to be exploring a couple of things with these workbenches that I've set up, these weapons, ballistic benches, I guess you, you could call them. Uh, for one, we're going to be we're going to be examining what the variance is over distance for potato and aim and how much of a drop we get over how far. Now, when I first set this up, this is my short range experimental one. We're going to just turn it on. As you can see, the potatoes, pretty much a majority of them would fall right about this range. And this is my 60 block range. So from where you're standing about 60 blocks away, you have an almost laser-like trajectory, all right? If, if your target is 60 blocks away and you whip out your gun, you're well within your effective range for your weapon systems here. Um, so I started asking myself questions. I mean, like, how far can you go and still have an effective range? Um, with an automated system, 60, 60 blocks it's a kill zone for sure with your regular potato gun the favoritism here is once you're locked on target as you can see the light on the right hand side indicates a hit you can nail it every time at 60 blocks another neat thing that I want you to notice is there is a slight breathing mechanic if you look carefully and I compare it to the little switch lights, you could actually see how the screw goes up and down. How much does that affect your targeting? Well, let's pick a further target, which is that one over there, and see if I get a hit. Nope, it went over. If I wait for the breath to drop down, it still goes over. So it doesn't look like the breathing affects. So down lower, I, I scored a hit. See, light came on. Over and over and over again. So even though it looks like there's a breathing me me mechanic in it, it doesn't appear to affect the targeting. When you're holding a gun, and this is the trajectory favoritism that I was talking about before. When you're holding a gun, it lands every time. You could, if as long as you're on sight, you land you could land it almost every time once you scope it out now when you're using an automated system which is this gun you can see we get some hits some hits light up but even though it's a rock solid system gravity was not affecting my handgun the way it's affecting an automated system so we get a lot of short a lot of short triggers like that one down there and uh, it's not reliable so there is a there's an algorithm in there that is far more disruptive to an automated system than it is to our handheld weapon systems so that's something to keep in mind when you're building something automated the only way to make up for it is with scale so this is where having a stack of guns come in, using a lot more guns to make up for that deficiency that you would get. Whereas if you just sniped it, boom, you could hit that sucker every time. Okay, a little high. Every time. So between these two targets, to these two targetables, I have a 60 block range and a 120 block range. These are, these are really good effective ranges for when you are in any kind of combat. Now, here's something else that I wanted to talk about that I thought was really important. 
<clears throat> if you have something scoped out and you're landing that, let me move to the light so you can see the light coming on. And then you go no scope. See the light? Still hitting targets almost every time. And I'm not moving the mouse. Okay, there was a miss. Unless I moved the mouse by accident. So, no scoping, it looks like it introduces a percentage where you do miss every one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dude, it was just doing four. Now it's hitting every time. No scoping. All right. Let's introduce, let's double the range. Let's line it up so that I'm getting a hit every time. And then we'll go to no scoping and see if, okay. Now no scoping, three, okay. Third was a miss, one, two, three, four. Fourth was a miss, one, two, three, four, five was a miss, one, two, two was a miss. Okay, all I'm saying is that even though I'm holding my mouse rock solid, you get this variable introduced when you're trying to no scope at all. So you got your scope up, it gives you the hit every time. You're no scoping, it'll throw in a random miss every now and then. So keep that in mind, even though I'm keeping my mouse rock solid. At the 120 mark, as far as blocks are concerned, we're talking about um, a fault being introduced to the effective range. So now let's talk about ballistics. And, and when I'm talking about ballistics, we're going to move over to 350, 500, and 720 block ranges here. Now, the green is 350 block range. Yellow is 500 block range. And uh, the red is approaching 720 Actually, it's exactly 720 block range. And um, the, re the way I figured out how to do this was just setting up the gun, turning it on, going out there, seeing where the potatoes were dropping, and then making adjustments upward. Now, the first time I did this, I just cranked this thing up to like 15 degrees, and I wanted to see how far these potatoes would go. So I just went, all right, let's go 15, boom. And then I tried to find where these potatoes were landing and I ran all the way out to the edge of the map. I didn't see where these potatoes were landing. So if you're at 15 degrees, you're shooting out of the map. It's actually way, way too high. I started seeing uh, something I can measure in, believe it or not, down to one degree at a time. So if we move to one degree, I'm going to start getting a measurable um, targeting here. See how the light comes on? Boom. Off. But we're not landing a lot of hits at one degree. That's strange. So this would be at the 350 block range. Let's go over and look at the target and see why I'm registering so many misses. It used to not give me so much trouble, but... Okay, at the 350 block range, I'm getting a lot of short hits at one degrees. So, some hits are landing, but it doesn't look like a very effective range at one degree. So, if you want to send information, if you have another area, you may not want to use 350. You may be better off using 325 or keeping a 325 block range and using a one degree tilt to send your potatoes down range because this is how you tweak you tweak these types of messaging systems is just through trial and error. 
but hopefully what I've been able to do will help you guys set up your long distance uh, data transfers. This is really nice because you don't have to lay down a cable or anything like that. So the next one that we're going to look at is the 500 block range. Technically it's 492 blocks, but I just like rounding them up to nicer numbers. So we're going to go from 1 to 2. That'll give me about a 500 block range. You'll see the next light start turning on. And the, re the reliability of that connection, almost every shot but we are suffering some potato packet loss there at the 500 block range. So let's go over and look at the 500 block range just to give you an idea of how far we're able to send our potato information. Now this 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 has way more application than just um, data transfer or information transfer. We we're, we're also talking about um, what you might call it we're talking about artillery systems too so if you wanted to set up an attack on a target really far down range this is the way to go these this potatoes register as far as 500 blocks and the furthest that I've tested is actually 720 blocks I honestly didn't go that any further because I mean, if you can't spot a target, what's the point? If as, if you're looking at it from an artillery perspective, from a data exchange perspective, yeah, you could go a lot further if you want. But keep in mind, your targeting areas need to start getting bigger because look at the spread pattern of lights here. Let me move over here and I'll show you what I mean. The further out you go, it's not just a, a horizontal, it's not just a vertical. Uh, variance. Now you start getting horizontal variance also in the distribution of your groupings of potato shots. So yeah, the further away you're trying to send your uh, potatoes, the uh, bigger target you're going to need. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back. We're even actually landing some triggers here too as well. So let's head on back. All right. Let's bring it up to three degrees and um, we'll see if we're getting triggers at three degrees here. And that's the top. That's the furthest range that I was working with. And that's um, 720 blocks. You hold down shift, move, and we're at three degrees now. And let's see if, yep, okay, there we go. We are getting triggers now. 720 blocks away. Now I know some of you out there are asking yourself, Chief, what's your math? Don't you do math for this? And I'm like, no. I'll just set it up. I'll run all the way down there, see where I'm getting a grouping, and uh, then I'll just set up my target and try to make my target big enough to get hit by most of the potatoes. But doing it this way also really gives me a good idea, a good feel of the range that you could send potatoes when firing. Now here's a really neat thing. These are the automated systems, like I've told you before. And heading down to my 720 block range, you'll start seeing I have a much bigger target. This target is way bigger, but look, you can't even see where the potatoes are coming from. There is, you see a little bit of a, of a spark every time a potato shot. And this is my targeting platform. Oh, if you didn't know, yes, potatoes trigger buttons and switches. So that's why I used a bunch of switches and a logic gate because it's really cool. I mean, that was one of my favorite discoveries that I made when I was playing in my community time. They showed me that, yeah, you could hit these switches and they'll be triggered. They will, will be triggered by the potatoes at a distance. And I thought that was so awesome. Well, it made it real easy for me to set up these types of um, ballistics tests. So 
we pretty much covered the uh, trajectory and trajectory favoritism, scoping versus non-scoping, uh, how breathing really doesn't have a mechanic yet, but I think they might implement it in the future. One last thing, though, that I want to show you that's really neat, and that is, even though you can't see the target, let me run all the way back, even if you can't see the target, you can create um, a repeatable hit. I think more likely, let me stop this here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some targeting with the gun. Yeah, let me see if I can hit that target. Yep, I turned it off. But you have to you have to consider the arch. Now I'm going to shoot a little bit more over it. And remember, we only were doing one and two and three degrees of tilt up. So let me see. Let me tilt up, but let me try to have. Okay. The secondary target the his light is on. Let me see if I can land a hit on it. There you go. And the last target, let me just go up about a degree more. I'm still not hitting the furthest target. I might be going over it. Let me drop down a degree. Okay, that's the secondary target. Let me go up a little bit more. So even though I can't see the target, I could still, I should, I've done it before. I, you could still lob a potato. Uh, maybe I don't have an effective range of 720 with uh come on. Come on, give me a 720 block hit. Okay. That's 350. That's 500. And it's repeatable. See, like every time I get hit that 500, I can't even see the target. It's behind the screw, but I'm able to hit it. Now, if I just go up a tiny bit more, I'm still hitting the 350. Let me go up a little bit more. Come on, 720. Is 720 really outside the effective range? Oh, there it is, it lit up. Okay, so yeah, it is possible for you to land a hit at 720 blocks with your gun in hand, but wow, you can't even see your target, but it'll carry that far. So yeah, anything where you're holding the gun up like this high, forget it. If you want to basically hit a really far target, you don't you don't need to angle up that much higher. I mean, unless they're flying, if they're on an aircraft or something like that, then yeah, then shoot for the stars, but any ground-based, any ground-based vehicles, you want 1 to maybe 3 degrees tops. And you're looking at a range um, that's on par with an automated system. Now, there's there's ways to cover for your losses. Like I said, having a wall of potato guns will certainly increase your chances. If you want to do this um, metal storm style kind of kind of attack, but if you're just running around, gun in hand. That's the way to go. So uh, I hope you guys learned a lot from uh, this ballistics video I did on weapon mastery. Um, if you liked it, you guys know how to express how, how you like things. If you don't, you guys know how to do it too. But for now, I was your host, Chief Engineer, reminding you all to keep dreaming and keep building. 
um, and uh, you can learn a lot about some of the things they build, that's for sure. Till next time, adios amigos, bye bye. Woo! Working my target practice. Twink, twink, twink. Oh, dude, potato guns are gonna be so awesome. They are awesome. It's incredible what we can do with these guys. So excited.